Mike, Michael Valancourt as our, the chair of this board. All in favor? And none opposed. And next we'll want to, we need to elect a vice chair. So. Are you the vice chair now? I, have, I was the vice chair in, in 2018. 2018. Yeah. And are you willing to repeat those? I am willing duties? to repeat those, yeah. Uh, okay, I nominate Aaron Modrick to continue as vice chair. I second. Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Okay, on to the next item. Uh, approving the minutes from the October 23rd, 2018 meeting. Does everyone have a chance to review those and, and note any issues? I was not present at that meeting, okay. so I'll stand defer yeah, voting okay. on that. Anything else from members? I had no wishes, I'll, I would move that we accept the minute. Okay. I second. Okay, all in favor? That passes. Okay, and we have, again, another annual uh, um, agenda item um, to approve the meeting calendar for um, the year 2019. And this is usually uh, when we kind of look at this and if we have uh, specific issues with um, dates that are, or major conflicts, we might want to address that now. Uh, but if they're unknown, then we don't have to. Are we? Are these all the fourth Tuesdays? To, or, with the exception of December 4th? Correct. Yeah. Isn't there a, some sort of softball tournament that always conflicts with or something like that? It's, it's usually the, the yeah, it's usually the, or the, first, the December date is usually the same night as uh, somebody's um, middle school concert or okay. pond school, pond co concert, but okay. it always happens. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have to move on this? We do. All right, I, I move that we accept the schedule. Okay. I second. Okay. All in favor? Francis. Okay. okay, new business. Uh, item one, to hear the request of Thomas Wolf, owner of the property at 102 Delano Park, map U7, lot eight, for a conditional use, conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit in the space above his garage based on section 1975 of the zoning ordinance. Is Mr. Wolf here? I, I received a letter uh, from Thomas Wolf authorizing Peter Southworth to represent him at this meeting because uh, Mr. Wolf had to be away on business, is my understanding. Okay. So, if you want to step to the podium yeah. and give an introduction. And Ben, can you tell us a little bit about this project? Yes. Uh, Mr. Southworth, as a general contractor, is working for Thomas Wolf. Uh, did a demolition rebuild of a single-family dwelling at 102 Delano Park, and in the process of, uh, of in the process of the building project, uh, Mr. Wolf decided that he would like a second kitchen above the garage for when in-laws came to visit. And I advised them that in order to do that, they would need to come to the zoning board and go through this process in order to have that second kitchen above the garage. Okay, thanks, Ben. <laughs> That's all we're looking for is a mother in law's apartment, basically. Uh, they both have elderly parents that uh, will come and stay periodically. That's all it's for. Okay. A question for the yeah. applicant, if I may. Uh, it, this, the septic system is, is a new septic system associated with the reconstructed or, or yes. new construction. It's and the chamber system that, that will accommodate enough bathrooms and all. Okay, so it, it was it was planned to accommodate the, this yeah. this uh, accessory dwelling unit. Okay, thanks. Just a, a clarification. This is uh, 
uh, structure that's already built, correct? Or is it in the process of being built? Process of being built. Got it. Okay. So this, this the existing structure that was there down to the foundation. Yep. And uh, added on to the foundation in a couple of spots and then take it from there. Okay. And this was a change to the plans that were originally permitted? Or was uh, this in the original permitted well, plans? This is an original, original permit, which is. Uh, he just wants to finish above the garage. Okay. Okay. Well, it was what, the permits. What, what happened was they, they submitted the permit and they showed you showed you showed a little kitchenette on the permit and I said that I couldn't approve that kitchenette on right. the permit, so that was not approved and and Peter at that point spoke to Mr. Wolf and he said, okay, well we'll just we'll just make it a bonus room with a bathroom at that point, which is allowed. Mm -hmm. So they proceeded down that path for a little while and then they decided they did want the kitchen so they began this process so it kind of it was originally part of the plan then it came out of the plan and now it's back to being part of the plan the size and shape and look of the house never changed from start to finish just whether or not that got it what was included the, in the in what, the envelope of whether that. or not the eight foot kitchenette was above the garage is the only thing that came and went from the project Okay. Great. Thank you. One more question. Can you can you uh, clarify how one would get into the, the the apartment? It looks like there's an entry through through what's, through the garage. what's called the bonus room, but then there is there there's also a stairway up from the yeah. There's a stairway up. There's also an elevator. You have to go in into the uh, mudroom of the house and immediately an elevator to your right. I see that. Okay. And there's access through the second floor of the house into that area also. Okay, thanks. Does anybody have any further questions for the applicant? was provided with a full-size copy of the survey if anyone needed to see anything closer. Okay, I think we're, I think we were good. Uh, good. Yeah. So, what's the other side, Matt? You, yes. Okay, you. great. I'm calling you out because you're <laughs> studying your plans. I'm reading. Okay, great. great. Um, well, thank you. We're all set. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any members of the public who want to wish to speak on this matter? Ben, have you heard from any any emails or letters about this? No, I haven't. Okay. So I'd like to open up for a board discussion at this point. Yeah, I'll, I'll quickly just say. Actually, 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 I'm sorry. I, I did receive one phone call with a couple general questions about the application, but. Didn't, didn't express any okay. serious concerns. Okay. Any, any concerns at all, really. Okay, once once I understood the application. Good. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you know, I've reviewed the application and the, and the plans <clears throat> against the requirements of section 1975B, and I, you know, I find that generally it, it, it meets all the requirements. Uh, and to me, this seems like a, a pretty straightforward application um, that could be approved tonight. I would agree with those comments. Okay. So can somebody make a motion? Again. I move to approve the request of Thomas Wolf, owner of the property at 102 Delano Park, map U7 lot 8, for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit in the space above his garage based on section 975 of the zoning ordinance. Second that. Okay, all in favor? Good. 
Okay, well, we read some findings of, fa findings of fact into the record. This is a request for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling in an existing single family dwelling per section 1975 of the ordinance. Number two, the subject property is 102 Delano Park, map U7, lot eight. I have a lot six on my paperwork. Okay. Six. Six. I see the eight crossed out and the six written in next to it. I suppose you have that full size survey handy just to make absolutely sure. Uh, It'll be in the tax map anyway. Huh? Survey. It would be on the tax. It looks tax like map. an eight to me, but it's really small. Yeah. Seven lot eight. Okay, so that's what's on the our paperwork here. All right, so finding a fact two, the subject property is 102 Delano Park, map U7 lot eight. Number three, the owner of the property is Thomas Wolf. Do we need to kind of come on with the initials? Yeah. We have further additional findings of fact. The proposed, the finding, additional finding of fact one, that the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Number two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. Number three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Number four, the proposed site plan and layout are, are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. Number five, the design and, ex and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. Number six, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements in section 1975.b of the zoning ordinance. Do we have a motion to accept these findings back? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chair, just to, I know that we, the videotape's there, but five people voted, right, no one abstained. Okay. The application was approved. Okay. Item number two, to hear the request of Frank and Cheryl Orzel, Owners of the property at 7 Crescent View Avenue, map U16, lot 63, to replace and expand a garage and mudroom based on section 1943.b.3 of the zoning ordinance. Ben, can you tell us about this one? Sure. Uh, Mr. Orzel came in to meet with me several months ago with a proposal uh, to tear down his existing non-conforming garage. Uh, expand it and add a mud room and uh, a section of porch. The lot is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. The side setback is 25 feet. Uh, therefore, he didn't meet the 25 foot setback, but he uh, is able to he is able to replace the garage without making it more non-conforming through this section of the ordinance. Welcome, Mr. Orzel. Uh, my name is Christopher Steen. I'm a, a resident of Cape, okay. and uh, Frank Orzel is my father-in-law. He couldn't oh, okay. be here tonight. He's uh, away on business uh, this evening. Um, Cheryl Orzel, my mother-in-law, is here present, um, and they've asked me to make the presentation, if that's okay. Absolutely. Um, 
they bought the home in 2010, and it has a non-conforming detached garage, um, which, as far as we know, has been there for decades, which is in really uh, dilapidated condition, really not suitable for storing a vehicle or much else. Um, needs to basically <laughs> be torn down, I think, one way or another. Um, their hope was um, by replacing it with a structure that's um, deeper, they may be able to fit two vehicles in a garage. Essentially, that's one car wide and two cars deep. Um, the current garage is, I think, between 15 and a half and 16 feet off the rear property line, non conforming. Um, the new garage would be essentially the exact same distance from that property line. Um, and then the hope is to take a uh, space that's currently a deck, which is located between the house and the garage, turn part of that into a, a mudroom breezeway so they can have a, an attached garage rather than a detached garage, and then put a small porch on the front um, for both aesthetics and, and for another approach to the house. Um, so they're looking for approval, um, basically put that new structure up and keep the same, I guess, non-conforming setback that's there now. Do we have any questions for the applicant? <clears throat> I have a question, and it relates to um, the neighbor to the north, I guess, which is, this is kind of confusing because you're on the corner of Crescent View Ave and Crescent View oh. Ave, but... <laughs> <clears throat> so the neighbor, the neighbor closest to the where the garage is, yes. and it, you know, I, generally I think it, it, it's a good plan. It, my, you know, the only thing I noticed was the garage is sliding east or, or expanding to the east, and it, you know, one of one of the standards we have to consider is impact on views. So you know, my, my question is, what do you feel like there is any impact? On, on the neighbors' views, you know, understanding that, that if they if they could see the ocean, it, you know, it would be in that direction. Have you heard anything from them? Are they aware of this? Or it, no, I mean, yes. The, um, my mother-in-law's had a discussion with the, with the owner next door. Um, the current boundary between the two properties has a six-foot stockade fence. Um, the adjacent property has a back deck, which may be slightly elevated, but their view is into the existing garage that's there now. Um, and then if you come forward, you're basically next to, I think, their garage. And if you look in the direction of the ocean, all you, all you see now is a house. There is no water view from that location now. And so rather than seeing the house on the other side of Crescent View, they see partially the side of the expanded garage, but it, it would not reduce their view of any water or I think anything else that they would be concerned about, in my opinion. Okay, thank you. Uh, so sort of further to Mike's point, that was the one of the things that, that was noticeable about this. Do you know what the current height of the garage is and then what their proposed height of the new garage structure would be? I don't, I don't know if it's on the rough, the, the initial premium plans that we had. The initial garage that's there now has a shed roof. Mm -hmm. It has a seven foot garage door, probably another foot or two of soffit and then probably nine or 10 feet. Okay. Um, uh, without looking at the plans, I mean, I'm going to hazard any guess, and the new garage will be a little bit taller um, so that you can walk comfortably. I can't actually walk comfortably in the, the old garage without ducking, um, <laughs> so the new one will be taller, and then it'll have a roof that's pitched this way, so, you know, I, um, I don't know if it'll be on the 16 foot, 18 foot range, I'm not, I'm not positive. It'll be shorter mm -hmm. than the house that's there, but it, it will be taller than the existing garage. I just don't know exactly by how much. And, and you, we, you don't have plans drawn up yet there is a, for that, or yeah. do we have? Yeah, it's yeah the first first couple pages of the packet here. Oh, I see how that. Okay. So I'm looking at uh, what we're calling picture number one here. And is that standing in front of the extant garage looking over at this, to the, to the right of the house at this neighbor? Picture number one. Yes, that's, that's standing right in front of the existing garage, in front of the garage door looking because it would be north and that's the, the stocking fence. Okay, and so basically the, okay. where the, the 
photographer is standing, this place is kind of where the addition exactly. would. Exactly. Okay. okay. And so basically we're seeing here the, the stockade fence, and then they've got the, these plantings actually behind it, too, that are growing. Yes. Okay. Okay. Additional question? <clears throat> today, what is the pitch of the roof of the existing garage today? Does it pitch to... Does it pitch towards the fence on that it's side? It's pitched towards the west. Okay. And in the proposed condition, it will pitch. It will pitch it towards south. the fence. That's south, correct. Yeah. Um, any concern or, or can you talk about the condition of, uh, or is there going to be a gutter, I guess, question one, and where is where will the runoff from that roof go? Do you anticipate any drainage issues? No, I mean, there's gutters on the house now. There's no gutter on the existing garage. Um, I, I, yes, you, I assume you guys are going to put gutters on the new structure to match, essentially. And um, I'm guessing they'll, they'll root the gutter down the north side of the new garage and dump it out in the back, which is where the current garage drains to. Gotcha. And then on the other side, you're going to get a portion of breezeway, so that will wrap around and drain on the other side of the house, kind of yep. in the center of the property. Yep. Thanks. So on let's see. It's the second, I'm sorry, it's the third drawing. It's an overview of the lot. Yes. Yes. Um, the, there's a shaded portion on my copy and it shows that the new garage will be 16 by 36 feet. And then there's approximations from the, um, the boundary lines on the north side and also from the east side. The, it looks like the new garage will be slightly inside the footprint of the old garage. Part of it will be. I'm, I'm sorry? Part of it will be within the footprint of the old garage. Sorry, um, I just want to—I want to know if there's an error on the drawing, or this is on purpose. And so the, the footprint of the old garage is 16.2 feet to the boundary in the north, and 0.4, sorry, 0.6 feet uh, further away is the new garage. 16.8 versus 16.2. The garage um, runs uh, not exactly parallel with that property line, and so it's actually, it, it kind of is, is further from the property line towards the east side, and it's closer as you go towards the west side. Okay. And so there'll be a, probably a portion of the new garage that's that matches what's there now, and then the part that heads east will actually, because the property line is diverging away from it, will be a little bit further from that property line. Yeah. I think it's an issue of the drawing here. Essentially using the same exact footprint where there's an overlap and then the new garage is just further or close to the street. It's doubling, doubling the length. Right, right. I mean, that, right. In, in the worst case, I would imagine it may be you know, like an inch or two even sure. you know, yeah. further from the property line. But yes, in the worst case, it wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, encroach any further than what's there now. Thank you. Yeah, the, the, the existing garage at its closest point is 15.5 feet from that property line, and the proposed garage is proposed to be 16.8, so, so they're pulling the proposed garage back a, a little over a foot from where the existing garage sits. That's, that's how I read that drawing. Yeah, the, the, 
the back of the existing garage is 15 and a half feet from the property line. The front of the existing garage is 16.2 feet from the property line because they are not exactly parallel. The new garage <coughs> will extend forward and actually the back of it's being, being brought in a bit. So the smallest separation from the property line, which would be at the very back, would still be more than 15 and a half feet because that closest point's being shifted forward as, as the two lines diverge from each other. And this, pardon me, and this can be done because there's actually nothing in between, uh, there's no structure in between the house and the garage right now. So you're basically expanding and making a larger garage and there's filling that in? right now. Okay. And the deck will be you know, uh, reduced in size and then a portion of the deck would be removed and replaced with that mud room. Okay. Uh, just so I'm orienting myself properly, I, I, uh, this is the, there's a bunch of these are labeled picture one. It's the second to last picture um, in the package. I believe this is being taken from the north facing south. Correct. And it would show on the right side where the uh, new garage and, and mudroom would be located, correct? Correct, the, the car that's in that photo would basically be about to drive into the new garage if it was there. Got it. And is that the view corridor then? Is there any view there? I mean, it's, it's a little tough to see, but. No, I mean, the, the only view of, of water from this property is from the front porch, which is on the south side, okay. which you can't see in this photo, okay. and from a second story window. Okay. But you can't see the ocean from this point. Further questions for the applicant? Do we have any members of the public who? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sure you're sure we're all. Uh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Can you, can you state your name uh, yes. address for the record? Scott, Scott Irving. I live at 27 Crescent View. And actually, we moved on to the block in 1982. We actually lived next door to where the Orzells are, uh, the opposite side, the south side, uh, on the same side of the street, the corner of, as you said, Crescent View and Crescent View, which is a, that's a little confusing. <laughs> uh, used to be three in the old numbering system. That's confusing, too. My mail still keeps going to. Uh, person who was at 12. <laughs> but uh, so I just confirm a few things. One that, yes, that garage is old. It was there when we moved in. So uh, and I don't know when it was built. And then the block went up in 60, 1960, I believe. But um, view-wise, yeah, I, I mean, again, as you said, the only view is from that front porch going down. Uh, I've also been in the backyard and the house next door on the other side the one that's to the north, and yeah, there's, there was no view today. There was no view, actually, when the house is smaller. So uh, that's not being affected. From what I gather from the plans and everything, it sounds like it's gonna be a nice addition. It'll be a, to the benefit of the neighborhood. So I would, I would just like to support that. I think it'd be very good. So that's it. Great, thank you. Thank you. Then have you received any uh, correspondence from Residents? I did not. Okay. So I'd like to open it up for a board discussion. <laughs> yeah, just to, just to summarize, you know, I, <clears throat> the nonconformity is being reduced. I think we've was explained very well by the applicant, the applicant's representative. Um, and you know, when we when we go through the the review standards that we're required to to look at, um, 
in, in determining whether it meets the setback to the greatest extent practical. Um, I think it does. I, I don't see don't see any um, real real issues with with the plan. Um, it, when I first looked at it, I, I did have minor concerns about the view from the north, but um, it, seeing the pictures of that the fence and the tall arborvitae that are on the other side of the fence that you noted, uh, I'm no longer concerned with that, and we haven't heard anything from that neighbor, so um, so I'm comfortable uh, supporting supporting this application. Um, one clarification um, is, maybe for Ben, is this a non-conforming lot or is this just a non-conforming structure on a, on a non-conforming? It's both. Okay. What is non-conforming about the lot? Is it the lot size? It's, yes, it's less than 80,000 square feet. Gotcha, thanks. I would tend to agree, and I think this is really exactly the sort of purpose that um, you know it, we should be promoting in uh, terms of allowing uh, your neighbors to have you know kind of grow with the times, as it were. Uh, I would just point out, uh, you know, there's no addition to the bedroom count here, so the septic system appears also to be uh, in conformance. So I'm supportive. So can we entertain a motion? I gotta go back to this. Uh, um, all right, so I, I move uh, that we approve the request of Frank and Cheryl Orzel, owners of the property at 7 Crescent View Avenue, map U16, lot 63, to replace and expand a garage and mudroom based on section 19-4-3.b.3 of the zoning ordinance. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? It passes unanimously with one missing member. So we'd like to read into the record additional findings of fact. Uh, finding of fact number one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. There is an existing single family dwelling on the property. Additional findings of fact, number one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Number two, the proposed structure will not increase the non-conformity of the existing structure. Number three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Do we have a motion to accept the findings of fact? I have one suggested um, edit, I guess. Okay. Finding of fact number one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. There is an existing single family dwelling on the property. I think we should note that the, the, the existing house is also non-conforming. There's an existing non-conforming single family dwelling? I think that covered it for me. Any discussion about that? I know, but I have another uh, another oh. finding of fact to be added. Okay. On the earlier application, there was a number six that says that the applicant has dem demonstrated compliance. Uh, I was suggesting that perhaps a similar statement could be added to four or five in referring to the code section. Gives us authority to approve. The applicant has demonstrated compliance with section 1943B3. Yep. Yep. Okay. Is that four or five? Was there a four, Mike? No, just that, no. that would be four. That would be number four. Okay. Next Thank one. You. Any other changes people would like to make? Okay, so we're going to, uh, the finding of fact number one, 
uh, the corrected <coughs> finding of fact number one reads, number one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. There is an existing non-conforming single family dwelling on the property. We also have an additional, fi additional finding of fact. Uh, here is number four. And that will read, the, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements in section 19-4.3.b.3 of the zoning ordinance. All right. Yes. Do we have a motion? May I entertain a motion to? Uh, so moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor? So passes unanimously. Thank you. On the next item, to hear the request of Stephen Pondellis, uh, representing the owner of the property at 226 Bowery Beach Road, map R09, lot 40, to expand a single family dwelling by adding an attached garage based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Mr. Chairman, I'll say something for the record. <clears throat> so I've worked uh, professionally with Mr. Pondellis in my business. Uh, we, we share common clients. Uh, but, uh, I don't think that's a, a conflict for me in reviewing this application, but just wanted to put that on the record. Okay, thank you. Ben? ben? Sure. I've met with Mr. Pondellis on a few occasions to discuss this property and he was trying to figure out a solution for the owners of this property to be able to get into their, get from their garage to their house and remain undercover. And kind of a, a difficult property, the way the barn is situated and uh, the way the Route 77 right of way comes uh, roughly 50 feet into the front yard of this property. It's, a, it's an odd situation. So when you add the 50 foot setback line. The, uh, the setback of the property is almost 100 feet from the edge of the pavement. So it's, it, it's an odd situation and uh, he's trying to provide them with a garage to get into their house undercover. That's the goal of the project. And I advised him that it appeared the only way to do that would be to use this zoning provision. Thank you. Can you introduce yourself to, uh, for the record? I'm Stephen Pondellis, I'm an architect in Yarmouth, and I'm re representing Dick and Kate Gilbane, who can't be here tonight. They're um, at a family matter that they had to attend to out of town. Um, they, they came to me and asked me um, if I saw any way that we could provide them with the covered parking attached to the house in an area of the house that um, that makes sense for them. They occasionally they'll park at the bottom level of the of the barn. The the, the main level here is no longer set up for for cars. So occasionally they park in the lower level of the barn, but then you have to walk through the barn, come up the stairs, go outside, and go back in the house, and not into a portion of the house where the kitchen or any possibility of a mudroom exists. So uh, what this plan does it creates a, a new entrance at the side of the house that they use all the time. And right now, um, parking is about where the, where we show this parking structure. Um, that's where they come in, that's where everyone parks. And um, it seemed like the, the, it answered most of the issues that they have with the property. Um, they understand that their house is non-conforming with the 50-foot setback, and they ask if it's possible to um, to do a parking structure in this location. And 
Like I said, we met with um, Ben and um, uh, were advised that if it's not making uh, the property more non-conforming, that it could be a possibility. And um, that's why we're here tonight to ask you for permission to continue in this direction. Do we have questions for the applicant? So I guess just so I'm clear, and this is partly, I think, for you and, and partly for Ben, the existing, we're calling the bottom of the stairs here in the front, the 26 feet is the existing nonconformity, correct? Correct. So as long as we stay within that line, we're not increasing the nonconformity. Correct. Okay. Uh, I guess one of the things we consider on these requests is, you know, we call it the, the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Was there, were there any other options for the location of this that were considered or maybe you could walk through sort of why here as opposed to, you know, further back, further to the side, is there? Sure. Um, the, um, the kitchen entrance, which is what everybody uses is between uh, where we're showing this new parking structure and the barn, but the kitchen is, you walk, that door, you're right in the kitchen. Okay. There's no opportunity for a mudroom there. That was one of their other requests that if there's a way that we could attach parking to the house, they could provide a place where they could actually kick off their boots and hang up their coats and not bring the weather right into the kitchen. Um, also bringing, bringing it that far forward um, would create a problem with, with turning around, getting out of the parking and, and not right in the face of the garage. So um, it seemed like that was the best option of all that, um, that were possible. Um, the other thing that's attractive to them about this location is that the weather comes from that, from that end. It also blocks the, kind of blocks the wind and the driving rain from the uh, south East, I guess it is. Got it. Um, and they're not looking for um, three closed garage stalls. They they want this to be compatible with the kind of the farm agricultural vernacular. So it's really an open parking structure. Okay. And it just solves a lot of problems for them. It also provides a the place. There's a little storage area for trash and recycling, which they don't have now. Um, for such a big property, it seems like. There would be a lot of options, but this you know, process of elimination, we kept coming back to this location. Yeah. So they've asked me to uh, see if we can do that. I can, I can uh, definitely see the challenge. I mean, it's a, it's a very um, obvious property when you're you know, coming around Route 77. So you actually answered another question of mine, which was there are no doors on the garage. It's an open structure. I didn't see that that mattered anywhere in the zoning code, whether there were doors or not, but uh, yeah, that was a question I, I had for Ben as well. I, I don't think it does factor into the zoning. Okay. And I can attest to the fact that, you know, I sent Mr. Pundellis back to the drawing board several times on this, and he, he really did try to figure out something that would meet setbacks, and there were uh, obvious roadblocks to all the other solutions, but he, he did put the effort in. And there's no additional curb cut that's required? That's, no, uh, that's already there, that's existing? Existing driveway, okay. and that area I show in green combined with the existing gravel driveway and the where the parking structure is, is where they park now and it's all gravel right now. So we'll be um, adding gravel on the barn side, but returning uh, the gravel to the lawn where we show it in green. And then, not that there's any additional bedrooms, but the septic system is an, of an unknown date in size and um, I, I guess I can't say that it's of an unknown date. I've got the size there, the proximate location, um, which is down um, plan, down plan from the barn. Mm -hmm. Fifty-six by fifteen foot disposal system. 
Does that show on your? Uh, it shows on that. It's just on the. It doesn't say what the flow or gallons per day is on that. So, or the the. I didn't know that it applied because there's no plumbing or bedrooms. Um, but it must be on record for the town. I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I could find that information. But yeah, I don't. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, for I, don't, I don't think it's necessary either. But since it, it's one of the things that comes up on the findings of fact, it's always good to yeah try to have the information. Yep. I think I, I misread what the question about <laughs> septic was about. I just uh, I sort of misread it to to, uh, to I thought the question was asking if this new structure is going to be um, near the septic system or too close to the, the septic system or to preclude a future septic system. I wasn't quite sure what the question referred to. You could find that there's no effect yeah. on the septic system. Yeah. <clears throat> right. Yeah, overall, I mean, I think it's it's a probably the best solution to a very complicated problem. Uh, so, I'm I good. Think Thank you. If, if we're allowed to do it, I think there's other benefits as well. It kind of creates a, um, a barnyard or a dooryard, and it also blocks a bit of 77 from the way they get into the house, mm -hmm. which is it's a real, you know, when you're there, it's just kind of a blast right through the whole property. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do I have any additional questions? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have any members of the public who would wish to speak? Nope. Uh, not seeing anybody here. Ben, have you heard, heard from uh, any concerned citizens or anybody? I have not. Okay. Let you open up for uh, board discussion. Yeah. I'll say I, I do like the application, and I also didn't know that. Uh, Number 77 had a 150 foot wide right away. So <laughs> definitely makes the setbacks interesting. Probably didn't look like that in 1814. No. So does anybody want to make a motion to approve? Or draw them? I, I will move that um, the request of Stephen Pondellis representing the owner of the property at 226 Bowery Beach Road to expand a single family dwelling by adding an attached garage based on section 1943B4 of the zoning ordinance um, is approved. Add, add the map and lot number. Oh, yeah, sorry. Map R09, lot 40. Okay. Friendly amendment to that motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Motion passes. Six, one, two, three, four, five. Five, zero. Okay. Count. Okay. So we'll read additional fi uh, read findings of fact. Uh, number one, the property is, is, it, is property is a conforming lot in the RA zone. There is an existing fam single family dwelling on the property. I'd like to modify that the single. Yes. Not a conforming yes. single family dwelling. So again, number one, the property is is a conform is a conforming lot in the RA zone. There's an existing non-conforming lot, uh, non-conforming non single-family dwelling on the property. Okay. Additional findings of fact. Number one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on, ad on adjacent properties, location of the septic system, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Number two, the proposed structure will not increase the will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Number three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. Just a, a friendly amendment on one. I 
think instead of relocation, it's enlargement? That's correct. Okay. Last word of finding one should be enlargement. demonstrated compliance with the requirements of section 19-4-3.b.4 of the zoning ordinance. And that would be additional finding of fact number four. Correct. Okay. Make a motion to a uh, motion to approve these findings of fact. So moved. Second. Yes. All in favor? Five zero. Approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, for our final matter tonight, we will hear the request of Lisa Cotter, owner of the property at 14 Woodland Road, map U1, lot 13, to expand her single family dwelling by adding a second floor based on section 19-4-3.b.4 of the zoning ordinance. Thank you, Tessa, this one? Sure. <clears throat> I've been working with Ms. Cotter for several months, if not years now, uh, on a new home she purchased, uh, trying to get a little little more space in the house, considering she considered several different horizontal expansions, and uh, she finally settled on going upwards on the house was the most practical way to go. You can see that it's a very small lot in the RC zone. Uh, three sides of the house are non-conforming to the setbacks. Uh, this application is relatively straightforward, going straight up on existing. Based on section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance. Could also be considered B4, some of these kind of <laughs> yeah. straddle the sections. Okay. Um, speaking of straddling, is there anything different about this because part of it's in South Portland? Yes, and I, I did intend to address that with you. I think, uh, I think the zoning board should make a finding that I cannot issue a building permit until South Portland is okay with the situation. <laughs> we, we, could, we could word that language a little better. Okay. But I, I think that should be a condition is uh, that we get an approval from South Portland okay. prior to my issuance of the building permit. It's a very, very small portion of the house. A few, a few square feet of the house is in South Portland, but we do need to respect their jurisdiction over that corner of the house. Okay. All right, thanks, Ben. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Can you uh, tell us your name and address for the record? Lisa Potter, 14 Woodland Road. Okay. And I have been in touch with Matt, who is the um, uh, code enforcement officer for South Portland. And my builder has um, given him a copy of the um, survey. And he has requested um, plans for the house um, once we get a ruling here. Okay. And do you know what your time frame is for? Uh, you will have to you'll have to receive approval from their zoning board also. Um, they just have to review them. Um, he seemed to uh, indicate. I've um, emailed him a couple of times and heard back from him a couple of times in January, and he seemed to indicate that it was um, their procedure to review the plan, but he didn't expect any problem. If you can see on the um, survey that there's. 
the only thing that will, <coughs> excuse me, affect South Portland <coughs> is um, the very corner of the house. So essentially a roof line. It actually looks like on your, on your proposed, on your plan, you're, you're not at, in that corner. Mm -hmm. There's not actually an increase in height. Or is there no, a little there, bit? There's a slight increase because the, the roof pitch will have to Okay, change. okay. But you're not adding a full second story above there. Correct. Um, it's in South Portland, okay. We, I had considered a colonial rather than a cape, but that would have involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi there. A uh, couple questions. Um, you know, because we're going up and, mm -hmm. and not out, it, it, would there, are there any views? Has anyone, any of your neighbors expressed any opinion on, on the, the increased height is going to have any effect on, on views? No, I've just had support from all of my neighbors. Their biggest question is when are you going to get started because I've been in this planning process for Great. Uh, second question: uh, w Will there be any change to the the direction um, that stormwater would run off the roof? Are there gutters today? Uh, will there be gutters on the on the enlarged house? Um, and are there existing drainage issues? And, and do you see this having any effect on drainage around the house? There's no um, current draining issues. Um, and there are gutters on the house right now. And there will be gutters on the, on the, on the new house. And will they discharge to the same location? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for such a well-prepared presentation. Um, I have really no questions beyond Mike's and, and I'm fully supportive. Hope we approve it and wish you well. <laughs> I'd also like to say I think when perhaps before you purchased the house I did I toured the house uh, as part of an open house and and uh, it was a really great little place. <laughs> it, but it looked so much bigger because it didn't have any furniture. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And there's absolutely, when I have boys who are in their 20s and there's no place to eat when they come home. It's so tiny. Cool. And does anyone have any further questions for the update? Yes. Do you currently pay taxes to the city of Portland? Uh, city of South Portland. South Portland, excuse me. Yes, you I do. pay about $200 a year and for that I get garbage and recycling. Sweet deal. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good actually. First time in oh, yeah. 28 years. Wow. I'm just curious. I wouldn't expect too much flack from them. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, thank you. I've been seeing no members of the public here uh, for commentary. Uh, ben, have you received any any uh, correspondence from the public? No, I have not. You've not. Okay. Given that, uh, I'd like to open it up for discussion. I Go. have nothing to say other than the wording of the South Portland nuanced part of the application, or, or the, um, the findings of fact. So I'm, I'm content with the application. Okay. So would you like to entertain a motion for, uh, to, pat, to, to work on this? Uh, <laughs> I move to approve the request of Lisa Cotter, owner of the property at 14 Woodland Road, map U1, lot 13, to add a second story to a single family dwelling based on section 1443B3 of the zoning ordinance. I would just correct you, you said 14, it's 19, sorry. Um, and We're then talking about at the, the section section 19 19 3 b3 of the zoning ordinance I will accept that friendly amendment I, I think as a friendly amendment 
I know that's how it's listed on the uh, matters before the board and the findings of fact, but the public notice referenced B4, and so I think it might be better to, to do it under B4, since that was the public notice. I think B4 would probably be and more, I think that, more appropriate anyways. Yeah. Enlarge, so what we're talking about, it, does this fall under enlargement, or is this reconstruction or replacement? And in my mind, it's enlargement. I would tend to agree with that, yeah. Okay. The, the, the determination or, or the, our review is nearly identical in both cases, but um, I, I think you're right. I think it would be more accurate to, to be reviewed under 19.43 before. The provision under paragraph 3 says that for a reconstruction or replacement, one of the criteria is that it will not increase the number of square feet of floor area, and that cannot be, it's an impossibility in our situation. Yep. So B4. Well, uh, yes, <laughs> um, but this has to do with um, uh, a de minimis or oh, an error, a clerical error on the notice. I guess we should all agree that it's going to be in section B4 then, as per the notice, and the actual findings was incorrect. But we haven't done the findings yet, so we can. Right, so the notice was accurate, yeah. and we're and amending, we'll correct it amending on the, the findings, which is the better way to go. go with enlargement versus relocation. Yeah. yeah. Although we still have to, that was a motion, right? I will withdraw my motion. <laughs> <laughs> you can change your motion. I'm not going to change my motion. I will withdraw it. <laughs> I will move, Mr. Chair, to approve the request of Lisa Cotter, owner of the property at 14 Woodland Road, map U1, lot 13, to add a second story to a single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Do you have a second? I second. Okay. All in favor? Motion passes five to zero. So, findings of fact. The prop, one, number one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RC zone. There is an existing single family dwelling on the property. Additional findings of fact. Number one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, location of the, sep location of the septic system, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the enlargement. Number two, the proposed structure will not increase the, well, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Number three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. What's our wording for our number four that we've been having? Okay. I also have a friendly amendment. Uh, on, on, um, it's paragraph one, the last word in location. Should be enlargement. Enlarge. I, I read it as enlargement. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, finding the fact number four. The applicant has demonstrated. The applicant has demonstrated compliance with section 19-4-3.b.4 of the zoning ordinance. Thank you. And so now we need, we want to add the the finding fact five based on on. Uh, South Portland. Uh, do we have a proposed funding pack for that? Uh, I'll take a step out of it. Uh, great. I was going to say, prior to issuing a building permit, the code enforcement officer uh, shall receive satisfactory evidence that South Portland has approved. Or what are you? What are they approving? The issuance of a building permit, or just the? Well, that would be a condition, not a finding of fact, right? Oh, you're right. Yeah, that would be better as a condition. But uh, okay. Yeah, they're. 
they should confirm zoning compliance with the portion of the expansion that's in South Portland. Okay. So prior to issuing a building permit, the code enforcement officer shall receive satisfactory evidence, evidence from South Portland that the portion of the project in South Portland is in compliance with their zoning ordinance. Works for me. You said it again. Prior to issuing a building permit, the code enforcement officer shall receive satisfactory evidence. from the city of South Portland demonstrating that the portion saved it from, it's getting wordy. But. So prior to issuing, prior to issuing a building permit, this, this code enforcement officer shall receive assurance from the, sure. assurance from the city of Portland, South Portland that the portion of Port the project within South yep. Portland is compliant with their zoning ordinance. Is it its or their? It's. 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 Okay, so it's a draft here. Prior to issuing a building permit, this, the code enforcement officer shall receive assurance from the city of South Portland that the, the portion of the project within South Portland is compliant with its zoning ordinance. Sound okay? Great. Is there more or I have a query for you? I'm sorry, but Point of order. Yeah. When you say the city of South Portland, are we saying the entity or can an agent such as code enforcement officer provide that evidence? For example, I, I, I think I think it would make sense to say South Portland code enforcement officer. Yeah, that that's fine. I, yeah. I'm hoping that it's an email type of exchange yep. would be sufficient. But <laughs> that's good to have it be a to have it be a, a specific entity that will be responsible for it. That's a good point. I do. I think having the opportunity to go to South Portland to file an application is probably a little extra, but. It's up, to, it's up to South Portland what they want to do. So, I have prior to issuing a building permit, this, this code enforcement officer shall receive assurance from the code enforcement officer of the city of South Portland that the portion of the project within South Portland is compliant with its zoning ordinance. Okay. Okay, so, and we want to not put this in additional findings of fact, but put in a condition. You want to ask her if she accepts that condition? No. Would you accept, do you accept that condition? Does that sound right to you? Yes. yes. Sir. Okay, thank you. I had another query for you, is whether we should ask for their cooperation if they don't. I don't want this to have a, a, a um, longer head um, mm -hmm. or resolution so if we say or we ask for a response and they say no then what would it be helpful for you to review the emails the I don't believe so because I, I think I don't see why this would break down I think what we're talking about is just like just in case I mean, I, I think our goal is to not have to have you come right. back before us, but to leave this within the purview of, of our code enforcement officer. Yeah. Um, so if we think we've done that, then I think we should be okay here. If we need, if we need to give the code enforcement officer more leeway, then I would suggest we do that. But I, I think we're, it seems to me like we're good with what we have. We are hopeful that the answer is going to be positive coming back. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, they 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 make their own decisions, I guess. Though, yeah. right? I can't really compel them. Persuasion is a wonderful thing. 
Well, maybe we can convince the council to uh, annex the uh, 25 <laughs> square feet. Yeah. Oh. But then you'll lose your trash service, yeah. so sorry. That's, that's a good deal. <laughs> I'll be persuasive. Yeah, okay. 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 Uh, okay, so uh, housekeeping, where in our, this is a not, I'm, I'm, I don't think I've dealt with a condition uh, before, so is this, where do we put that in the, the approval? I, I would just put it as a condition uh, prior to the decision to approve. Okay. It's a condition like of approval. If you change the yeah. word conclusion to condition. Oh, okay. So we just need to vote on the findings on of fact. The findings okay. of the condition. Okay. So do I have a motion to approve the findings of fact as, as so written and read? So moved. A second. Second. All in favor? Passes five to zero. And now we have an additional condition uh, for approval. And this reads, prior to issuing a building permit, the code enforcement officer shall receive assurance from the code enforcement officer of the city of South Portland that the portion of the project within South Portland is compliant with its zoning ordinance. I move that we accept that condition. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Passes five to zero. Thank you, Mrs. Carr. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And that concludes the uh, the meeting for tonight. Thank you. That's so we can. Is this the first time uh, one of these that's like half in South Portland, half in Cape comes up? Uh, yeah, it's, it's the first time we've dealt with it at a zoning board level here. Yeah. A few years ago, I was asked to write a letter 